Good morning, everyone. We are back in the UK and I am dressed for a very exciting day. Today is new car day and I'm so sad <laughs> because I'm feeling quite run down today. My um, glands are swollen and I just feel really quite lethargic. It's definitely not like an illness in the contagious sense. This is one of those things where my body lets me know. And then I've come home, got home in the evening, and then the next day I had the most wonderful Elizabeth Arden dinner for International Women's Day. And it was in partnership with the Prince's Trust who have this incredible new campaign. I don't think, I don't think a campaign has spoken to me as much as this one in a very, very long time. It's called Change a Girl's Life. And basically um, what it centers around is the Prince's Trust identified that they were doing so much to help men, but um, were maybe not um, focusing their work as much on women. And they really wanted to shine that light um, across both, not just one, both. And so that is where the Change a Girl's Life uh, campaign kind of came from. And um, they're working with various partners, but Elizabeth Arden is one of them. And there's five pounds from every sale of um, eight hour cream that is going to towards this campaign. Um, it centers around women from disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, and basically there's like mentoring programs, there is workshops, there's fundraisers to help give women direction and um, point them to, towards resources and people and things like that, that are going to, to help them in finding what they want to do with their life. And if you're new around here, you'll probably know that, I know people have a lot of misconceptions about me as a person, but um, I'm always here to put them right. And whilst I don't come from a disadvantaged background whatsoever, I did come from a single parent home, um, a single working mum who did her absolute best by both my brother and I. And I remember feeling extremely lost. And so put that with all of the challenges that come from disadvantaged backgrounds, I can only imagine the challenges that women are facing nowadays in terms of just coming out of the pandemic. Like the pandemic was hard on everyone. And I feel like that was something that was really touched on last night by these wonderful ladies. And it was lovely because they did it so holistically. It wasn't just some women. Everyone, um, everyone was was impacted mentally, confidence wise. They're really kind of focusing on the confidence, the self belief of women today, which I just think is such an incredible cause. For me personally, as a woman, <laughs> I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. I didn't know what was possible. A lot of people wrote me off as, as someone that would only ever um, become the bit of arm candy to um, a wealthy man and never gave never gave me the the credit that I might go on to to do things in my own right and that really got into my head at a young age and I really I almost played into that because I didn't have the ability to access information understand the possibilities that actually no as a woman I could go and do wonderful things I could achieve my my dreams luckily I don't know where, but like, luckily I was able to kind of put those those almost like stereotypes that were put onto me to one side and I obviously found something that I loved and something that I still love doing 10 years on and I feel incredibly grateful to be able to do that. And so the thought of being able to, in some small way, help change a girl's life with Elizabeth Arden I think is so wonderful. So I'll pop all of the details in the description box down below because we have to leave like imminently to drive to, to pick up my new car. This is a big moment for me as well. And I know that there's a, you know, a point of contention around um, women showing these kinds of things. If I had not found women like me doing things, doing like big things and doing things that were, um, you know, having their own careers, striving for these more, you know, wonderful things, whatever. I don't think I would have aimed for these. I don't think I would have had those as like benchmarks. And whilst happiness and um, material things are very, very different, this is a big moment for me in terms of like, I've never done this before. And every time I buy a car, we always talk about this is I've never done this before. Um, my last car, I've never bought a brand new car before. And even though I bought it off the forecourt, 
I'd never done that before. It was a real moment for me to be like, wow, Lydia, first of all, this is your dream car at the time. And you're, you're going there and you're buying it, like you're buying it full price, brand new. This is huge. And now I've done the whole thing where I've like designed a car from scratch. And it's, for me, it's more, I always say this about my cars. It's more about me getting to drive my family around, my dad, my mum, my grandparents and making sure that they're comfortable in, in my car. That to me is such a really special thing. I'm sure if one day I have children, it will be a real um, wonderful thing for me to be able to do that. But yeah, so I'm hoping, and I know that it does, I know that a lot of people watch my videos and it does help them with, even if it's just productivity. The success of women is really important to me. And so this campaign, when I was listening to the stories, listening to the women, it really, it really spoke to me. So I'm going to pop a link to all of the information if you want to donate, if you want to just top up your eight hour cream, you can do so in the description box down below if you want to find out about more of the things that they're doing with the Princess Trust. It's all down there. I feel like we've got this really wonderful community of women that encourage each other. You guys encourage me so much. I hope by some small way I encourage you. How about we pass that on to some women that um, are maybe having harder times struggling with with confidence out of the pandemic or direction and let's let's help them anyway um <laughs> back to my video so yes i am dressed i'm ready to go i need to just quickly run and um swish my mouth with mouthwash i am wearing a holland cooper blazer which i belted at the middle let me let me think i've gone ballet flats white jeans bag i kind of obviously wanted to go for the green and tan vibes of my new car which is you know i'm trying not to get too excited um but yes i'll link this blazer in the description box i don't know whether i should wear it like normally or like this do i need a scarf who knows we shall find out one thing has arrived that i wanted to quickly unbox before we leave to go to cambridge because i saw this on the holland cooper um instagram and i was like oh my gosh i need that i need that for the new car and it looks to me like they have sent it as a happy new car gift so Holly Cooper has released their umbrella and it is in the beautiful shade of green that Holly Cooper is almost iconic for now and I am going to take this with me and pop it straight in my new car as a little practical option I'm not going to open it inside, but you can see it has the beautiful Holland Cooper logo. This is just, you know, this beautiful wooden handle. This to me is like branding, branding dreams. I love it. It's so beautifully understated. I love that it says great British excellence. It's got all of the, all of those beautiful details. So I'm going to tuck this under my arm and head on my merry way. Obviously, in honour of the Royal Rover, we are going to be wearing High Grove Bouquet by Penhaligans. Haven't worn this for a while. Oh, I really love this fragrance so much. Et voila! Gosh, I'm so nervous. Okay, we're about 11 minutes away from the dealership. Um, I'm very excited, slash a little bit nervous, and looking forward to enjoying a fairly long drive home because I think that's the thing when you often go and get a new car you don't actually get to drive it straight away and I remember when I got my previous car no in fact when this car was dropped off we then went on a trip and I didn't even get to drive it so yes when we got the sport I remember we had the car yeah we had it for two days we then traveled to the Maldives oh and yeah didn't drive it for the first two weeks of having it oh yeah came back out of flat battery yeah <laughs> yeah that was funny oh gosh but um there'll be lots of driving in this one yes yeah yeah um, i'm looking forward to it same i can't remember the exact spec i do obviously know the fundamentals but yeah i know that we've got a few little things going on yeah one thing that i wish we had put in after seeing uh, jeremy clarkson's is the um, drinks cabinet in the boot that does I mean, it's not. It, is it a drinks cabinet? I thought it was a gun cabinet. But he pulled out the drinks. It might be. The, it might 
might come with drinks and guns, which don't ah. mix very well together. Um, but the drinks cabinet pulled, pulled oh. out, and then he had a load of like, I don't know if it was like slow gin or anything, but they were sit whilst they were talking about the hedging, they were sipping on it. And I'm pretty sure oh. that was in the boot. Yeah, no, but, I, I, but his is an old one. It's yeah. not a new one. Yeah, and I, I guess the reality is, is you're not gonna drink and drive. No. So if you're putting drinks in the back of your car, you're not really gonna go and sit on your drive and have a drink. No. In the back in your house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, that's very true. Very fair point there. It's a lovely idea. Yes, uh, it is. Dedicated driver. Designated. Yeah, what well, did I say? Dedicated. Dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dedicated driver, to be fair. <laughs> But we're driving through some lovely countryside at the moment. Yeah. I don't think I've ever been to Cambridge before. No, I don't. Do you know what? I have. Yes. Really beautiful. And I'm pretty sure this is where you can come into punting. Yes, it is. We need to do that. We yeah. do need to do, like in the summer, we need to book punting yeah. with like Carrie Bot and her boyfriend. Bottle of wine, a bit of punting. Yeah. Happy days. Yeah, I'd like to do that. Nice restaurants apparently over here. Yeah, I think we should do, we really should do that because I've never done it and I've always wanted to. Good shout. We can drive the Range Rover. So we have seen our car, which is obviously in this dark room, but you can see the colour is it's so much more beautiful than I realised it was going to be. It's such a gorgeous shade of green and it, I'm just so happy that I did all of these like silver detailing changes as well inside. It's phenomenal. It does feel like it's bigger than the other one. I don't know why. We're just doing all of the paperwork uh, to take the car but obviously we went for the tan leather interior. I love that the seat belts are tan as well. Um, obviously the wooden console and detailing as well. Got the little, oh, it's so nice. It's nice, it's soft Yeah, it, we, they're the exact same seats as, um... oh yeah, lovely. Massage. Well, I am just sitting in my new car and I've just got a bit of a, um, Tour, but I kind of know how most of the stuff works in here now, so it's very, very cool. I'm all set up, my phone's linked, I'm just waiting for my payment to go through, and then I'm guessing I get to drive home. But yeah, I've set everything up. We also, I didn't realise we paid extra for the hot stone massaging seats. So all of them have got hot stone massaging seats, which, which I'm definitely gonna test drive on the way back. My phone is connected, Classic FM is on favourites. I've just set my seat. Um, I've also been able to fully position the heads up display so that it's right for me. I've got the sat nav on this screen, whereas I'll keep this for the entertainment screen. Soon we're gonna be on our way. Can't believe it's finally here. Okay, first drive in the new car. I've got Ali on loudspeaker at the moment because we're gonna go and get some food. But the team at Land Rover were absolutely amazing. Uh, they even got me flowers and champagne. They're in the back, I'll show you them. Um, but yeah, we're gonna to head to get some food now and I'm just gonna enjoy driving well, it. Ali's been- in the back. Pardon? The team are in the back, are they? The flowers are in the back. <laughs> it looks so different like taking it out of there as well like with this coffee color I'm just over the moon but I'm following Ali now so we're gonna head and get some food okay I'm Lydia from the future you'll see throughout this video I end up um, getting a little bit poorly throughout I was like am I just tired or am I actually like getting ill and I finally succumb to um, my illness and um, I, get, I basically gave myself a few days off and I didn't want to rush this bit or do it whilst I wasn't feeling 100% because I like showing you how much I enjoy talking about these pieces and I don't want to have to like just like work through something and try really hard when I'm not feeling 100% so thank you for allowing me to just jump in here. I thought I was showing you my umbrella and I thought to myself do you know what when I get back I'll show them all of the other things that I like as well and that didn't happen. I got home and I walked through and I just face planted the sofa. <laughs> 
So um, I'm going to show you some of the new in bits from Holland Cooper now. As you know, I work with Holland Cooper on a year long basis and it's such a joy for me to be able to do this because I know that there's a huge amount of synergy between myself and the brand, but also so many of you. I actually can't believe how many of you shopped before Christmas when we worked together. I genuinely like it. The fact that you love this stuff as much as I do is genuinely a dream come true and i have some of my favorite pieces to show you from holland cooper obviously i'm a huge fan of their tailoring items and for me it's really quite um, it was actually the thing that like attracted me to the brand as they also have brought out these more practical pieces i now have a very holland cooper heavy wardrobe and i thought i could show you some of the pieces i know i showed you one of the items which was the new gilet and it comes in navy. I'm going to show you it again, the one that I had on when I went to, to Soho Farmhouse, but then I'm going to show you the navy one. I've got a new dog walking coat. I've got some new bits that I want to show you and um, I love them a lot. So I thought that we could go through them together. This is one of my most worn uh, country blazers from Holland Cooper and I was wearing the green one as well to go and pick up my car. But this is the, the sort of black version. I feel like this goes really beautifully with the Holland Cooper boots. Um, this is like one of my fail safe outfits. When I want to wear a more sort of pared back classic black look, but still give it a countryside feel and that sort of heritage British feel, this is what I go for. Obviously, you know, I love the, the green sole of these boots and this is just such an easy outfit to wear. You can also belt the jacket like I did with the green one, um, but you can wear it like this or you can wear it open. I love this over the shoulders as well, but it's a really lovely length if you want a slightly longer, a longer blazer, but this is perfect on me. Look at that blazer length, like the dream. Um, so yeah, I'll show you the other bits as well. So you'll have to excuse this, but I've actually been wearing this so much that I've managed to get something on this. But you saw the way that I styled it up before. I've styled this up very casually, whereas this is how I would really enjoy to wear it on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, just adding some intrigue to an all black outfit. I love the color of this. The dual pocket is a dream as well. So you've got these kangaroo pockets, which for me, I find so handy on like a practical level, but also um, the little kangaroo pockets as well here. And obviously, as I said, for riding, this is perfect. If you want to, to ride in this, it literally has these little slits. Um, the cinched in waist just gives this this instant like classic feel but a more elegant silhouette. I love this. So anyway, you've seen me wear this already, but this is something like this is such a I want to go to the pub and I want to be comfortable, but I still want to look good. And I feel like my life at the moment is just I'm more of a pub girl now than I am like an out out girl. <laughs> um, but I'll show you the navy one as well. Now this one I'm trying to keep mainly for best, but I mean, I kind of want to keep them both for best. I feel like I need two of these. Obviously you can wear them uh, like this and not cinch them in as well, which I think gives a more paired back look. But for me personally, you know what I'm like. I love to create shape because I don't really have too much of a sort of naturally curvy shape i'm very much like a bit of a stick insect so anyway if i can hack that i will <laughs> and i'm personally not someone that is offended by wearing black and navy i think it still gives that really classic feel you can pop the collar on this to give it slightly more of a preppy feel but like i said i'm trying to keep this one for best um again it's got the flaps for riding Wonderful to, to just add a touch of country to an all black outfit. Obviously you can add scarves, but this really is the season for gilets where we sort of transition like this. You really want something that's gonna keep you kind of warm, but you don't wanna be bogged down with layers. I kind of always think of myself as a bit of an onion at this time of the year, where I need to strategically layer so that I don't get too hot and I don't get too cold, and these are perfect for that, so love this. But you're gonna see me style this up later in the video when I'm starting to feel a bit better. My new dog walking coat is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And in fact, I'm gonna show you this to begin with. So this is the gilet that comes inside of the new coat, and 
you can't actually buy this gilet, which I think is such a clever, a clever way of doing things. This is like a, it only comes with this coat. All of the other gilets you can obviously buy individually, but this one um, is, essentially it attaches to the inside of the coat. So again, at this time of year, if you're walking somewhere, if you're maybe taking the dogs to the pub, or if you're walking down, I don't know, somewhere for dinner and it's close by and you know that you're gonna to want to take some layers off, this coat is perfect. And I always feel like an outfit like this, classic black trousers, black boots, a gilet, I still feel like I look really nice. Um, I don't look overdressed, but I look, I look nice. <laughs> but the piece de resistance is the dog walking coat and this, goes over the top like this. Um, I'm already using this. I've already got bits and pieces and seeds <laughs> in each pocket. But basically this gilet attaches itself to the zip on the outer side of this. And it means that you've got a really layered up um, coat. Now I went for a small in this. I did try the medium because I thought I don't want something that's gonna be too restrictive. Sizing on this is perfect um, for movability, warmth, comfort but not looking like you're wearing your husband's coat this really is for me a dream they've thought about this they've thought about the detailing nothing is over like branded it's all very very understated typically in line with all of like the country wear that i love and the colors used the fabrics i believe this is waterproof it's got a hood it's amazing so this is a standout piece i actually didn't think i could love a practical jacket as much as i love this <laughs> This really is the season of the gilet for Holland Cooper and I feel I, like genuinely, I'm like in awe of Jade's designs on this because she really has just honed the, the heritage of Holland Cooper beautifully to create these pieces. This is probably one of the more sort of like streamlined and flattering gilets. I wonder whether you could actually attach this to the inside of the coat as well i'm not sure if you go for different colors but this is like a fleece and i've shown you this as well in my videos because i get very excited when i show you things very quickly but um this in terms of quality level i would say that this is a sort of cut above all of the other gilets that i've purchased not to like say that they're not good but i would say that with the leather trim and the thickness of this fleece the shape as well she's this is the thing with jade is because she's so particular about tailoring she's applying those same silhouettes and th that same thought to creating beautiful clothing for women to her country wear so this really does like fit like it's not just something that is functional it looks beautiful so for girls like me and i know that people like to say oh that's not very country to want to look nice going to the pub but i love being different in that respect and that i really like to look nice but I also really love the country life and I don't feel like I have to choose between both. Jade's nailed it. I absolutely love this. It comes in multiple different colors as well. The, the embroidery on the neck is gorgeous. It's got this quilting detailing and this beautiful leather patch at the back. Perfect. And again, the fit of this is just the dream. So this is more of like a waterproof quilted style, but with again, those same leather patch detailing I love this aged brass stirrup that says Holland Cooper. Like this is the most beautiful branding I think that, that Jade has ever done. I love how it's just like, if you know, you know. Um, but again, you can wear this with obviously more rich tones. If you wanted to go for chocolate leggings or something like that, I wear these pieces pretty much as like a staple when I'm at home now. I've become that person that is like in comfy clothes. When I'm not working, I'm in my comfy clothes, I'm in my gilet, because I like to be able to either potter in my kitchen or potter in my garden, and these are the perfect pieces for that, so I love this. And then this next one is for my early mornings to farmhouse. Because it was so funny, when I was getting ready that morning, I was like, oh my gosh, I actually, I'm not really a puffer jacket type of person, usually but i wanted to have something that was sporty but not like sportswear and i wanted something that was warm and i wanted something that was flattering and i thought is this too much to ask and then jade sends me this and i'm like clearly it is not too much to ask this is my new basically i'm going to the gym at farmhouse jacket 
this with my green leggings, trainers, I can pop a gilet under this if I need an extra layer, and I don't feel like I'm going in your typical sportswear. I feel like this is sportswear, but in line with my style, which for me is important. I know it's not important for everyone, but I'm very particular in things like this. Um, but the thing that I love about this is that it's practical. You might have seen this popping out from under my collar, but it's got a little pack away bag um, to pop this into, all very conveniently designed and beautifully branded. I'm so, so in love with this collection. It's just so me. And then on the back, it's got the Holland Cooper embroidery. Generally, I keep everything quite understated. So for me, this is the perfect. I, honestly, I can't believe it. It sounds like I'm making it up, but I'm like, it's, I feel like sometimes she's inside my brain when I'm like, mm, I could really do with something. And then it arrives and I'm like, how did you do that? <laughs> how did you get inside my brain? <laughs> anyway, this one for me is brilliant. So you're going to see me rocking this. It's going to be perfect for spring, summer as well. If we're getting up at six in the morning and heading to farmhouse, I'm going to want something that um, keeps me warm, isn't too bulky, going to fit in my bag. But then as the sun comes up and it gets warmer, I'm not going to want to be carrying around a big coat. So this is leisure wear in my like favorite way possible. I love this. So, so happy. I also have some new Wellington boots and I'm very, very excited for these because you will notice that I live in them. These are a pair of my favourite, this is actually probably my favourite colour of the boots um, from Holland Cooper. These are their Sherpa lined Wellington boots and these are a game changer because, and it's so funny because there's, I think there's some people that maybe don't understand them, but for me, because I go for early morning dog walks quite a lot, I want my Wellington boots to feel like slippers and I don't wear socks with them. I treat them like slippers. I have Sherpa line slippers that I don't wear socks with, but with these, I, I don't wear socks either because the Sherpa lining is the coziest hug for your feet. And also they're beautiful. And I remember when we launched these um, a couple of years ago with Holland Cooper, I can't believe how nuts you guys went. And so now they're available in lots of different styles, but this is almost like the typical and classic Wellington boot for, for like British kids growing up, I think. I feel like if you didn't have wellies this colour, although they might have had frogs on the end. <laughs> but this to me is like a grown up, practical Wellington boot that looks really, really nice. And I get so many compliments whenever I wear them. So I've got these ones as well. They're going straight by the back door. I absolutely love them. Anyway, I'm gonna pop this back on and I'm gonna segue into the rest of the video and I apologize for, and I apologize for getting ill. I did take time off and um, let myself get better, thankfully. I was really, really slow. I'm actually quite proud of myself. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video and you will see me after I get better. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It is now a considerable few days later and um, I am going to explain, I'm not apologizing, but I'm going to explain why I perhaps look a little bit more disheveled than usual and sound, I don't think I sound too bad. I'm like with Ali and we're driving to obviously pick up my car and I'm just starting to feel like almost like really not well. It was almost as bad as when I got COVID and I was just like, whoa, like I'm, I feel so spaced out. I'm like trying my best to put my best foot forward. And there was a lot of people there that um, like we walked in and the girl was like, oh, I know you from TikTok. And we got a lot of pictures with people, which I obviously, I love that. I never, ever mind. But I was then sent one of the pictures afterwards. <laughs> and I honestly look like white as a ghost. And so I was driving back in the new car. Ali was driving in, in the, the loan car. I'm driving back and I'm like, I actually don't think I'm going to get home in time. I might just need to get into the back of the car and sleep. Um, but I made it home. I left everything in the car. Ali had to come and like um, get the flowers out because the team was so lovely. They got me flowers um, and champagnes. Ali had to like get everything out of the car because by the time he got back, I was already asleep on the sofa and I have kind of been there ever since. Um, I spent all day yesterday on the sofa and... Um, Obviously they got us this really, really lovely bunch of flowers, but it had lilies in it. And so whenever there's lilies, like I obviously love the flowers and took pictures and everything, but whenever there's lilies, we always, um, it's like a rule of thumb that because we get so many flowers anyway, 
um, we choose that when we get lilies that we, those are the flowers that we'll use to make somebody else's day brighter. So we messaged one of our neighbours and I said, oh, I've got this lovely bunch of flowers. I don't want them to go to waste. Ali will drop them home if you just let us know when you're back. And she was like, oh my goodness, you are unwell. Is there anything that you need? And I was like, well, actually, I've just had my last throat lozenge. If you've got any of those knocking around, I would love some of those. She ends up coming over with a bunch of tulips, a bunch of daffodils, um, ibuprofen, paracetamol and throat lozenges. And she made me a hot toddy, which I had on the sofa last night, which was, was amazing. And... Um, I feel so much better today so that's obviously a, a really like positive thing but I'm not going to try to do too much I do need to get outside though like I've not gone for a dog walk in since last week it's now like yeah it's been nearly eight days since I went for a dog walk and I actually I'm like chomping at the bit now so I said to Ali I was like I just need to get up and go hopefully the fresh air will do me good and um yeah anyway just as a way of explanation as to um me looking a little bit um moly this morning i'm not apologizing because i'm really trying to be i know i've said this before but it's this weird habit that i get into i think it just comes from looking at yourself so much and there'll be sometimes where i'll be like lily oh my goodness you look nice today and i would never mention that yet i would mention when i don't look great but anyway I haven't even had the chance to enjoy my new car yet. Um, I've bought some bits to organise in there, so if any of that arrives today, I'll show you that. I want to get like really organised and have everything in there that like it's just a really organised space. And I've bought some nice, nice little bits for it. Um, but yes, I'm going to get some socks on and I'm going to get my new coat. I'm wearing this Holland Cooper jumper, by the way, and I feel like Holland Cooper jumpers are honestly like a cut above the rest in terms of like how they fit on shoulders. They almost look like tailored especially on someone that's got broad shoulders and I always love throwing them on with a pair of leggings when I'm going for a dog walk because I think that it just looks a little bit more presentable but this next jacket if you have loved my previous dog walking jacket you are going to love this even more this is the dog walking jacket that I have been waiting for you actually have no idea first of all it is the perfect color like for country life it is just exceptional it has really beautiful holland cooper subtle branding this embroidery just on the back is in almost like a tonal color um not only that but it is actually two in one so this has a gilet but this is like a gilet that you you can't i don't think you can actually buy this gilet this is almost like you only get it with the coat because it's I don't want to take it out because I'm obviously going to wear it, but it zips in, oh, I'm gonna do it, as an extra layer. So this is like, this is a jacket that is gonna see you round all year. And that's what I think is such a USP of this because you can add a layer, you can take away a layer. And as winter turns into spring, you can lose the gilet on the inside, but also it's not a duplication of any other gilets that you can get from Holo Cooper. So as you can see, you can also wear it like this, which it is beautifully fitted as well. And this is almost like a slightly different one. It's got pockets as well, pockets of its own, but it zips in to the coat. There is also a hood on the coat. This is like a Swiss army dog walking coat. And I am fully in love with this. I'm gonna get my boots on and I'm gonna take the dogs out for a walk and just get some fresh air because I definitely need it. And I do want to try and do a few bits around the house today in terms of like potting. I've got some asparagus crowns that I want to get in the beds. And I, yeah, I just want, I want to get on with things and I know I should let myself rest, but I am feeling a bit better. So after the dog walk, I'm gonna see how I feel. If I need a nap, I'll have a nap. But yeah, I think next week I've got one day in London. So hopefully, I won't have too much of a stress, strenuous week next week and actually it will give me time to do a lot of the act computer bits that you know I'm working on at the moment so yeah. Well there is the beast sat on the driveway. The colour is so exceptional. I'm a very very happy customer. It looks black on here but it actually it isn't black. It looks so good. Lumi, are you coming with us on the dog walk? Come on then my love. The happiest cat. <laughs> Lumi. We had to fight you together. 
she now thinks that all dogs are friends now that she's friends with Porter and Barkley. The boys are having sniffs whilst we admire this little stream. Whenever we walk past it, Ali always says, I always like this stream because it looks like a great place to grow wasabi after watching Clarkson's farm. <laughs> it's a very cute little stream though. Look who's been waiting for us to come home. Can you get out, Lumi? Are you a bit stuck? Come on, my love. Your brother's coming to see you. You get out. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. All the family back together. <laughs> we are back from the dog walk and what I... Oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> and the um, thing that I realised when I came back was I, um, I came to check on my sweet peas and I don't know what has happened but there, there has been something that has attacked my, um, my sweet peas on this side and I don't know what has done it. Like it's literally chewed, chewed them up and broken them. There's, I think there's one that is surviving just there. I don't know what has done this. For some reason, it's not happened on th this side, and these are all okay. Um, in fact, this one's doing exceptionally well. It's onto its first leaves. So thankfully, I um, sprouted my little new sweet peas whilst I was away because I've lost, I've lost a whole load of them over here, which has made me super, super sad. Honestly, I was devastated. You obviously saw how excited and happy I was that they sprouted and now seeing that I was like, my heart actually hurts. You can hear Ali calling the dogs with his whistle. But um, one of the things that I would like to do is to try and get my newly sprouted sweet peas into some pots um, and get them, get them all planted up. Nothing here, but I'm just gonna give them a quick water whilst I'm out here. As always with the garden, patience is a virtue. This is the um, the other planter by the door of my greenhouse that I put some bulbs in and none of them had come up before I left. But as you can see now, we have many beautiful tulip bulbs coming up in here and also in this planter here. So you can see lots of little tulips just surfacing in my window boxes so I'm guessing that this side of my greenhouse is maybe a little bit um, lower in temperature than this side because look at these guys coming up goodness me these are doing exceptionally well nice big tulips coming up oh this one's pushing the grass off wow gosh it's so exciting now, back at the house, if you watched Ali's video, you would have seen that this table arrived for up here in the hallway, and it has made us make the decision that I think we are going to have our um, staircases French polished, um, just because this looks so perfect, alongside the tones up here. And also, my neighbour brought me over some daffodils, which looks so gorgeous in this jar on this table. I styled this little area up with some books. This is my Pippa Patton book, which I love. Um, perfect English farmhouse. In fact, I might sit and look at that today. And then the country house style as well. A few little books. Seertree on Candle, beautiful old pot and a fern. But I love that with ferns, you can very much add flowers alongside them. And these are doing exceptionally well. It also smells like Mr. Mill and Gordon may have put some croissants in the oven because I can smell them and it smells delicious. Um, also, my neighbour didn't just get me daffodils, she also got me wonderful tulips and just a little bit of colour to brighten, brighten our kitchen. And I thought I would quickly show you how my little new sprouts that I did in my sort of video before we went did. And some of you said that it's likely that um, the seeds weren't good. And do you know what? I think you are right. I think the seeds for the Swan Lake sweet pea 
were not good because there is a lot of mold on them so i don't think i'll plant the ones that have mold on them but the ones that and i know that that's likely because they're in obviously a um uh, an airtight space with moisture but they have if you can see if i put you up closely you can see over here on this left hand side there's a lot of mold but these ones not so much so i think i'm going to get those ones planted um out there and then the sarah raven uh, april in paris ones these have done really really well and i don't think there's actually any mold in there so i'm going to get those into some pots either today or tomorrow if i have the energy i'm really wanting to get busy with these things but um i'm trying not to overdo it Okay, no, I said that I wasn't gonna talk about how I looked and how bad I looked, but it keeps getting worse because I've just watched a film where I've cried the whole way through and now I'm coming on here to vlog. So um, I'm really setting myself up for it here, but whatever, we're gonna go with it. This is reality. And I did want to tell you, the film I watched last night. Oh my gosh, this is almost like an Anne with an E moment. Do you remember how obsessed I was with, with Anne with an E? And I feel like I need to tell you this, but I watched um, a film not long ago, and for anyone that doesn't know, you might have been on my channel for a while, I am like obsessed with Beatrix Potter. Like I, when I was younger, I would say I had like a few Barbie dolls growing up, but my thing was Beatrix Potter. Like I loved everything about Beatrix Potter. I had all of the books. I would make my mum, my mum who's amazing at art, I would ask her to draw me pictures of the tailor of gloucester and the mice on the on the workbench and um them sewing taffeta gowns and things like that my mum would draw me that and then i would color them in so anyway i can't remember when it was but i watched um i can't even remember what it was called but it's the beatrix potter film with um what's her name dawn french and i have to be honest i was and I said to Ali last night, I actually don't think I realised how upset I was by that film because they made Beatrix Potter out to be not very nice. People are human and they're not always nice and that's something that, you know, we have to accept. But this, this film particularly made her out not to be very, very nice and I was really upset by it. Anyway, Ali asked me to choose the film last night and I found this film and I thought it was brand new but it was actually from like 2008, but it's called Miss Potter, and it's got Renee Zellweger, Ewan McGregor, and um, a few other people that I recognized. And I, it's gonna make me cry, even though that's not the film that I just watched that made me cry. Honestly, I loved it, I absolutely loved it. So if you're a fellow Anne with an E lover, like if you're that girl that like is just, I don't know, I feel like I have my head in the clouds sometimes. You will love this film. And I said to Ali, I think it had like three stars on, um, I think, what did we watch it on? It wasn't Amazon, it was on, on Sky. Um, I think it had like three stars and I was like, oh, it's probably not gonna be very good. Don't ever listen to those, because I remember that was the same thing that happened with Anne with an E. It had like awful ratings and then I watched it and it's one of my favorite series I've ever watched. And anyway, so I loved this film. It made me so happy. And there were like almost animations in there where like um, Peter Rabbit came to life and Jemima Puddle Duck. Honestly, I sound like such a child. I know I'm nearly 35, okay? But um, yeah, and um, it was just lovely. And she, I, what, what I didn't know about Beatrix Potter is that she, and she went on to essentially save, it was either, I think it was the Peak District or the Lake District. She essentially saved it because she bought up most of the land in the area and kept them as working farms so she and when she died she owned 15 farms and she left all of her land i believe to the national trust um and all of her estate to the national trust i did not know that and it just made me love her even more and maybe she was a complicated woman i don't know but i loved this depiction of her maybe she became quite grumpy after the loss of um norman i think it was um her editor who she fell in love with and ended up marrying, he died. Well, I don't think she actually ended up marrying him. It, 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 you'll have to watch the story, but um, yeah, it, it, maybe she became cold and grumpy after that. And maybe that was what happened because that happens sometimes when bad things happen to people and maybe they're, like, they're not able to make, the, make peace with it. Sometimes people go very like insular and get quite sad about things like that. But 
Yeah, and I guess that kind of comes on from the film that I just watched with Ali. I mean, he'll tell you about it on his channel, but he, it was a, a really sad film. Um, I think it's part of his partnership with Sky that he, he, he talks about it on his channel. And to be honest, I don't usually watch them because he gets given all of these like action films and I don't watch action films. But this one, he was like, no, I think you'll like it. It's called A Good Guy or A Good Person or something like that. And I watched it, it's very sad. Um, and it talks about a lady who had a traumatic time in her life and how she tortures herself and beats herself up for many years and becomes an addict and blah, blah, blah. And then goes on to have a bit of a, a, a lovely life. I mean, it doesn't really show that part, but it shows you that there's hope of that at the end. And um, yeah, so anyway, that was just what I'm telling you. So there's two things that you can go and watch um, on Sky or um, that I would 110% recommend Miss, po uh, Miss Potter because it was, wonderful and Renee Zellweger was amazing and I just loved it so yeah. I've had some deliveries arrive from Amazon which I think most of these are for my new car. I'm not going to get those open with you now because I'm going to take my little seedlings and I'm going to try and get them in the soil. I think they're going to do really well if I just get them in the soil now. I don't know whether to bring them in because I'm so scared that, that w whatever it was that ate my um, last bunch of sweet peas I'm worried that it's going to happen again but as I, I spoke to my neighbour over the fence and I just... And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my camera telling me, Lydia, if you're about to go on a, another eulogy or whatever they're called, speech about something that you've learnt in life, don't, because your battery's dead. So maybe I won't, but I was just going to say we have such lovely neighbours and I love that I can like show my sweet peas over the garden fence to my neighbour next door and ask her what she thinks. And I love that then I've got another neighbour that will like bring me daffodils when I feel sad and it's I, I tell you what it makes such a difference to have like neighbours around you and I feel like we're very very lucky here in that like there's a there's a real sense of community where we live in that I don't know how to explain it and I don't think I've ever lived anywhere where my neighbours have ever felt like that I haven't got on with them. I feel like we've always got on with our neighbours even when we lived in Milton Keynes like we, I don't know, we had, we had wonderful neighbours one side of us, wonderful neighbours the other side of us. In fact, we still speak to one of the ladies. She had a young daughter and often she'll like message us and check in. But it makes such a difference. Like I can't imagine even like being in my job what it would feel like if I lived somewhere. And maybe if I lived like in, I don't know, maybe if I lived like in a village, it would be different. But we have the loveliest neighbours here and like nobody... I just I feel very very lucky in that sense so yeah anyway I was gonna go on and on about something then but I'm not going to I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna get outside because it's getting dark Ali has just popped out to pick himself up a new iPhone cover because he got a new phone and has he taken the new car no he's not taking the new car and yeah so you've got more of me <laughs> So I don't know if this is anything to do with it. I've just potted up the, the uh, Swan Lake sweet peas. Um, but these are the April in Paris from Sarah Raven. And the only ones that really have got any kind of mould on them are the ones that haven't germinated, as you can see. So, um, yeah, perhaps you were all right about the fact that my um, Swan Lake sweet pea seeds maybe weren't very good. But these ones seem to be doing really, really well. So April in Paris, I'm gonna go into the pot. the little seedlings are tucked up in their new home um, and do you know what I think I figured it out I think I figured out why those ones were burrowed away like that and um, all ripped up I think that there was a day in the a few days in the run-up to when I was leaving that the door was open on the greenhouse all day and I reckon a squirrel came in just beelined for them. There is one, at the moment, one surviving royal family white. If I can keep one alive and I can save that one, I'm happy and it was meant to be. But for the most part, April in Paris and Sweet Pea Swan Lake are all in their pots. Now it might look like a bit of a hot mess, but my next job is to get some more asparagus crowns into the asparagus bed. I definitely think that I was extra stingy with how many crowns I put in. Now some of these will be available, like these will be ready to harvest this year, so I'm going to have to do it so that these don't get mixed up because I'm going to need to leave these for a few seasons, but I'm soaking them for an hour 
before going in between each one and adding some more in. Put quite a few in there, they cost quite a lot to get asparagus crowns, but yeah, I'm dedicated to the asparagus plants. My asparagus crowns are soaking at the moment, so I thought I'd show you the bits that I got from Amazon um, just for my fern is massively in the way, but just some bits for the car. And actually I got two of these, one for my dressing room and one for my car. This is a little wet wipes box that obviously you just pop your wet wipe wipes in and it just keeps them closed, obviously, but also a little bit more sympathetic. One of the things I always used to appreciate when I used to drive with my dad in his car, first of all, my dad's car was always immaculate, but, um, my dad is like an organization freak and in a good way and he'd always have like a bin in his car so that you always had somewhere to put your rubbish and the bin would leave the car at the end of the journey and be emptied at all times he would always have wet wipes he would always have like screen cleaners and things like that he always had everything that you needed ali's very very similar to my dad in that uh, capacity and i was not until um I met Ali and seeing how immaculate his car always was, I've definitely changed my ways and I keep my car so much tidier now. Um, so things like this, I just think it's nice for people that are traveling in your car with you. If they happen to eat something or drink something and make a bit of a mess, it's good to have wet wipes. Also just to wipe down your dashboard every now and again with a, a wet wipe. We use um, water wipes and they're super easy, but I also have them in my dressing room. So I was gonna put one of these in my dressing room drawer just to organize that a little bit better as well. One of the things that Ali is always very, very particular about is having some kind of sweet in the center island. He is always really passionate about having a sweet. Like whenever he finds one, he's like, oh, I'm so glad. So he likes to have them in his cars for people that are traveling in them. So I got some of these traditional Farah's uh, mint humbugs. And I actually really liked them because they are pretty much color coordinating with my car as well. Usually humbugs are black and white, but these are a sort of ivory and caramel color. Um, and I liked that these were sort of a traditional British sweet. I like humbugs as well. You can't really go wrong with a humbug. Um, then these I got, again, color coded with the car. I thought these were great. These have this um, sort of, um, rich tan color to them, but also still clear. These I was gonna use for a organization, but also like beauty products because I want to have things like lip balms, perfumes, uh, face mists and things like that filed away in uh, glove compartments just so that I've always got one in the car should I need it. I hate getting somewhere and being like, oh, I wish I had a face mist or something like that. So um, these will be used for that. And then I picked up these very nice atomizers as well, uh, just to have a sample of my favorite fragrance. I'll probably aim to get, this is gonna sound so sad, but I'm probably gonna aim to get four of these and then just have a seasonal fragrance in each of them so that whatever time of year I have a fragrance. I know that makes me incredibly sad, but I am a, I am a seasonal fragrance type of girl. The lovely tan leather bin coming for inside the car as well. I've already got some little tan leather hooks as well for hanging my handbag, those kinds of bits, just things that make things a little bit easier as well. Um, I didn't even show you the little box that my car, all of the stuff came in with my car. It was so snazzy, but honestly, I wanted to show you everything and it, re it really wasn't how I intended that day to go. I hoped that we would pick up the car and I'd come home and I'd show you around it. But when I pop the rest of the bits in the car, hopefully I can show you um, around the car a little bit more then. But yeah, I just walked through the front door and I like dropped things as I walked in. I was like, I'm going to lie on the sofa. <laughs> oh dear, how embarrassing. But yeah, so that wasn't how I imagined it going, but that is life for you. I always like to think that this is a, um, an actual TV show, but it's not, it is my life. So now I'm gonna grab my coloring book, I'm gonna sit on the sofa, I'm gonna finish off my book because it's Monday tomorrow and I would really like to start a new book on a Monday. And we're back up to speed now. Um, yes, feeling absolutely right as rain this morning. I oh, feel so much better and I'm so glad that I gave myself the space to just get better as well. It, obviously, I felt a little bit bad over the weekend because I was like, oh, I could be vlogging this. It could be such a, such a lovely weekend, but I'm actually impressed with how quickly I've bounced back. What I want to do is get organizing in my car for the remainder of the day and maybe I'll take it out for a spin because I feel like, <laughs> I feel like I haven't had the chance to enjoy it and I really want to enjoy it. <laughs>
<laughs> so um, yes, I'm gonna use all of those Amazon bits and pieces and start getting everything organized. I'm actually gonna pop um, probably a new pair of wellies in the back of the, the, the boot as well, because I feel like it's good to have a pair of wellies just in case, you never know what could happen. And if OG like YouTube watchers are watching now, you'll remember that when Ali and I met, um, not met, but when I was going to meet his parents for the first time, I actually drove into a puddle that was not a puddle, it was a river that had burst its banks and I got stranded. And if I'd had wellies in my car, I probably would have been able to get out of the car, but I couldn't get out of the car. And the most wonderful, I still don't know who this family was, but they um, got out of their car 10 years ago and they could see that I was crying and crutching, clutching my steering wheel and they pushed me out of um, this river that had burst its banks and pushed me to safety. I still don't know who they are and I wish I did but um, all of the good karma is coming for those people because oh, I hope it's already come for them to be honest but yeah wellies in your boot and a blanket but we all know about the blanket because that's just good practice in case you break down or anything like that so i'm just loading up the first little toiletries bag and i've popped some bdk villa neroli into this atom atomizer and that is gonna live in here like that i've got the uber youth spray and some eye drops as well in there i'm gonna pop a lip balm um and some other bit oh actually should i go I think maybe I'll do the Elizabeth Arden eight hour mist. Yeah, let's pop that one in there. There we go. So I wanted to show you the difference between our two Range Rovers. Um, this is obviously not our Range Rover. This is the um, black first edition. And this is my Belgravia Green autobiography. And you can see the, it is like a, a green black but it's definitely green when you look at it um, but it's hard to get it to come across on camera and it's a really smart um, not typically heritage I, you know what, I'd love it if it was this colour I would love it to be more green but by the sounds of things I'm a minority at Land Rover they said that there's lots of people that have not asked for this colour <laughs> it's mainly just me <laughs> but what I wanted to do was kind of show you the difference now I think this one's set a little bit lower like it's smaller but this just looks like a beast it's so weird i don't know whether it's the color or whether it just looks bigger I'm, i have no idea but this is the car it's been sat here doing nothing for the past few days so i thought we could get it organized and start putting my bits in i think ali might have already put my new holland cooper umbrella in but i'm gonna get my boots in now He's also loaded up with the dog's beds as well. <laughs> He's already been doing loads of stuff for me. We've also got our bags for life in there. So I'm gonna get my boots in and then that's pretty much the, the boot done. There's not too much to do because Ali's already done it for me. Let me grab my boots. To be honest, these are brand new and I kind of probably, um, I'm gonna wanna wear them. So I might swap an older pair out because these probably won't get worn quite so much. Um, but I'm gonna pop them in there for now anyway. But just to show you everything that's in there at the moment, I've got my Holland Cooper um, umbrella down here. We've got bags for life and other important bits and pieces in here. Um, I've got my Wellington boots. We also have a boot pull and a smaller umbrella. And then this is this is a sort of roadside safety breakdown kit, I believe. And then this is the dog's bed, complete with blankets and towels and things like that. This usually gets moved into the front seat, uh, into the back seat when we're taking them with us. Um, but yeah, that is the boot organized. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour um, inside. As you can see, it's got the sort of butterscotch tan leather interior. Um, and we went for the panoramic roof. We didn't go for the opening roof. We just went for panoramic. Um, it has so much storage in this car. I actually can't cope. There's a huge fridge here, which Mr. Millen Gordon has already started filling up with sweets. So we've already got some humbugs in there and Ali is partial to a Mawam and then a bottle of water. So as soon as, this is actually still cold as well. So as soon as you start the car up, the fridge gets going basically and um, soon enough your uh, drinks are all chilled and ready for your journey. It's actually been really, really useful. So uh, we were really happy that we went for this function in our own Range Rover because we had it in the other one as well. Then there is this little section here. So this is for your drinks, which I think 
is a nice it's a really nice location for it as well it's not too far back it's not too far forward um and then there is this little thing down here i can see ali gordon has already started filling things up so it would appear that mr millen gordon has already started filling this up and i'm going to have a bit of an organized and i'm going to get a little pouch for him because he's put one of his fragrances in here he's got some hand sanitizer and some cables and i think we can pop this into something a little bit more organized um, but that's the little place down there then you have another one here again mr Millen gordon has been busy in here um but he's really good because i never have changed so he always tops up my change drawer in there which is so helpful um i don't think this one goes back it doesn't because this is where you plug in actually he's already added a cable i was going to add a cable he's literally beat me to it on all of this stuff i'm so impressed chewing gum which is great because i didn't have any chewing gum to add to my little pouch and um gift cards because we always forget to use our gift cards that we get so we put them in the car which means that when we go to garden centers and things like that they're just there ready to be used this is the dual glove compartment so we have the lower glove compartment and then we have the upper glove compartment as well um i keep gloves in there and things like that but it just we're going to make it nice and organized i have my toiletries uh pouch so in here i have hand cream i have um, uh, eye drops, I have a face mist, I have my fragrance in my atomizer, I've got a, an Elizabeth Arden uh, 8 hour lip balm, I've got a ro I've got a little pack of the Rodial uh, glass paper which these are a godsend and so good because they never go off, they're perfect for keeping in places like this where the temperature might vary sometimes, so good. Um, I've got clips, I've even got because you just never know when you're a hairy girl. I've got a pair of tweezerman engraved tweezers, just in case, because honestly, I can't tell you how awful it is when you're in daylight and you check the rear view mirror and you're like, wow, that is one big stray eyebrow that needs a pluck in. And you've got these to hand. A few little silk hairbands and a clip because you just never know. Um, I'm going to decant a lot of these things into this pouch and then I'm going to get Ali his own pouch as well so that he can... Um, very handy of him to have put some masks in here, like so thoughtful. I'm actually really grateful that he did this because um, we're obviously giving the other Range Rover back and all of this stuff was in there so he's saved me a job which I'm very very grateful for and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bag and I'm going to pop it in here so that first of all all of these bits stand up there are a lot of unnecessary cables in here Mr Millen Gordon so I am going to we have a spare cable that is fine we may have spare cables do you know what the one thing that we forgot to check is we wanted to put an actual plug socket in the car and we couldn't remember if we went for it on our spec and i've just checked and i believe we have our plug socket so we can literally charge our laptops um like with a normal uh uk cable uh plug thingy so very very happy about that but i've just plugged this one in so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep a selection of like essentials in here because i know that ali will want his lip balm and things like that in here and then in my glove compartment i'll keep these more like luxury items and pop them in there i can see he's already moved some of our wipes in here so i'm actually going to see if i can stuff them in here pop those ones in there there we go and this is just so handy because you just literally pull them out of the little square so that can then live in here we have the toiletries here and then the uh, wet wipes in this box here then in here we have a selection of gloves and sunglasses and i will likely put our little this is our little emergency sort of um medicine bag so we've got some uh, paracetamol and tissues and uh, travel sickness sore throat tampax all of the good stuff and that can go in there like so okay so this back area is one of my favorite functions so this it's this center console because i just think this is such like it's such a beautifully designed space back here i actually think that the car is better in the back um, than in the front when you're driving it you're like damn it i wish i was in the back but i have to drive the car so 
it's why I always say that I'm super happy to like drive my parents or drive like anyone around in this car because I just love the idea of the people that I care about feeling wonderful when in a car with us and just feeling relaxed and comfortable I honestly love it so much um, one of those things is going to be adding some sweets to the center console because Ali has not done that oh he has done <laughs> he's so sweet yeah he's already got some malworms and some humbugs and it looks like some toffees in there as well uh, but I'm gonna add these ones that I've topped up on as well because these look like the lovely ones there's also this really handy space that you can pop your phone there you can leave it on charge and you can close this I mean not that I'm ever going to do that because um, I know how this world is nowadays but also you have your own little screen here in the back and you slide it open you can adjust your seats you can have the hot stone seat massage which is something that we went like extra for um, it's like a heated seat massager basically and all of the seats in here have it which makes me really excited um you can obviously control your climate you can pop the blinds up which i have never had a car that has blinds you have no idea this is what we get when we get fancy cars that pick us up when we're doing like jobs and i now have a car with fancy blinds um you can change the lighting but this is the function that i think is really snazzy this is where your cup holder hides and it's such a small touch but I really like it. I've got some little chamois coming as well so that we can clean the screens because as you can see with a touch screen car you get a lot of uh, fingerprint marks so I've got some colour coded chamois for the car. I know, I know I'm so sad but honestly at least you know that I'm excited about this because I'm a bit of a geek in this respect. This is what I was telling you down here, this is our little um, plug which will be very very handy for us. I love the way that the interior looks and it did make me laugh because I think that they thought that I was like an old fogey going for this colour but I just love it I love that it feels like a modern take on the old school like Land Rover and it's made me super happy and when I say that it's made me super happy what I mean is is that I've really like I'm happy with what I've got if that makes sense i am obviously just sharing a bit of a milestone with you and i know that sometimes people will get incredibly riled by videos like this they'll think it's incredibly superficial and they'll think that um it's me being very excited by material things and i shouldn't have to ever preface these things but i would like to because i would just like you to know that i'm sharing these things because i'm very very proud and i'm proud of what i've achieved and I like to share that with you because I feel like this is a safe space for anybody in the comments or to message me to let me know what they're proud of as well. This is a space on the internet where whatever you choose to do with your life, whether that is save the world, whether that is change the life of a human being around you or whether that is changing your own life for something more positive, this is a space where you will be celebrated but i just always want to remind you that i've made peace with the world that we live in and i know that these things may not last forever and so i'm also fully aware of the things that one day might this might all be gone and i'm okay with that but i'm going to celebrate it whilst it's here because if one day it's gone i'll regret it and i don't want to regret it i want to make sure that i lived every moment and enjoyed every moment to the fullest and one day maybe I'll be looking back on these videos and I'll think, wow, Lydia, you really, really appreciated those things and you really enjoyed them when you had them. And I think that's lovely. So anyway, I waited a long time for it as well. Like this is like over a year. Hermes bags come quicker than that. <laughs> but yeah, so anyway, I'm going to shut up shop in here now. I will also link all of the Holland Cooper bits that I featured in the description box down below. I am going to curl up on the sofa because I'm still trying not to overdo it too much. Um, but I'm going to curl up on the sofa and do what I do best on <laughs> weekdays at home when I'm working. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Bye.